Hey guys, what's up? So today we got a couple of topics to go through. It's a big video, a lot of information about Warzone and COD 2020's teaser trailer and reveal trailer. But first things first, clues regarding COD 2020's campaign story. Now, yesterday was day six of the recent marketing on the website Pawn Takes Pawn, and each day there was a new VHS tape. But as you can see, today it's all over. The TV is turned off, the VCR is turned off, and there's no more tapes. There were new codes each day, new coordinates that were tied to the codes related to the bunkers at those coordinates, and we were finding more and more clues. Now, some of these clues were already inside the bunker on the 2v2 trench map that released a couple of seasons ago, and I covered that because everyone was so distracted by the minigun-wielding teddy bear that they overlooked a lot of stuff that was inside that bunker. If you want to watch my video covering that, I'll have the link in the description. But the last tape goes through the year of 1981. They talk about spies and double agents and the infiltration of Soviet covert political operations to make it into our media and government to divide our country and make it weak. This was also rehashed through the teaser trailer that we watched yesterday. But if you look in the history of the infiltration, it wasn't too hard because our intelligence agencies were already doing similar stuff to their own citizens to an extent with MKUltra and the precursor to MKUltra that started right after World War II all the way back in 1947 where we had learned skills, we'll say, from some of the Nazi scientists we harbored in Operation Paperclip, learning from them different techniques in interrogation and brainwashing and propaganda that we were hoping to capitalize on in opposition to the steps the Soviets had made in interrogation, brainwashing, and propaganda as well. So it looks like they're getting into all that stuff, which is awesome. I'm super excited. But uh, anyways, players were now able to get into, I think it was Bunker 10, where there's this giant nuke preparing to go off, and it says Triple CP on the side, which was the full Russian acronym for the Soviet Union, um, which translated to English would be the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Basically an example of the nuclear weaponry that Reagan was actually warning against in the footage you saw on the last VHS tape. Reagan also mentioned the city of Burdansk with a B in Poland, which is what the map of Burdansk is actually based off of in Warzone. I'll have some images on screen of the actual locations in real life. But anyways, this rocket in Warzone was obviously hidden uh, under the people's noses, laying dormant until now. So people are obviously now trying to figure out how to get it to launch. But I personally believe that if it launches, nothing will really happen. Maybe the game will end, or uh, it will go up in the sky and you won't see it again, but I don't think it will detonate. At least I don't think it will detonate until uh, Warzone starts to transition to Black Ops Warzone. And I know a lot of us were hoping for a full-on campaign trailer to drop on Day 6, but instead we got a teaser, which is still awesome. Our first official Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War video posted by Call of Duty on YouTube, but keep in mind, it was reported to Modern Warzone on Twitter that one of the NDAs, it could have been for multiplayer, zombies, whatever, doesn't end until next week. And then of course he deleted that tweet, but soon after we found out Gamescom is happening next week, and as I tweeted out, they have COD 2020 on their list. So we will for sure, no shit, see COD 2020 gameplay reveal the whole shebang at Gamescom next week, with the campaign reveal trailer happening a day prior on the 26th, as advertised in the teaser. Gamescom is from August 27th through the 30th, and I can easily see COD being showcased day one. On another note, I also intend to start covering on Battlefield 6 when it's announced because EA is trying to follow suit with Call of Duty and go back to their roots, reinvent the modern day aspects of Battlefield, with Battlefield 6 being, you know, another modern shooter. But unlike Call of Duty, there is no confirmation thus far if Battlefield will be showcased or mentioned at Gamescom. But anyway, Sony will also be at Gamescom, and if Sony still holds exclusivity with Call of Duty, there is a chance COD will debut on the Sony stage as they've done in the past. So, when the full schedule gets released, and we can see when exactly Sony and Activision are showcasing, I will cover that as well. Now, as for breaking down the trailer that was released yesterday, let's take one more look. Understand what's going on around you. You are in a state of war, and you have precious little time to save yourself. process which we call active measures the first stage being demoralization it takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation the next stage is destabilization what matters is essentials economy foreign relations defense systems the next stage is crisis with a violent change of power structure and economy period of normalization 
This is what will happen in the United States if you allow all these schmucks to put a big brother government in Washington, D.C. We will promise lots of things, never mind whether the promises are fulfilled or not. Time bomb is ticking, but every second the disaster is coming closer and closer. The danger is real. So we are tracking down a spy whose code name is only known as Perseus. For those of you that don't know who this person was or could have been. In the 90s, after the fall of the Soviet Union, the United States became possessors of documents from the Soviet Union, dating all the way back to World War II. They found documentation referencing a spy codenamed Perseus, who had infiltrated the United States, uh, recruited into a position which gained him access to Los Alamos during the Manhattan Project. There were other references to the spy in other locations in the United States at further dates, but they alluded to the conclusion that said spy had infiltrated the CIA to one of the highest tiers of control, and or was in position of great influence over the intelligence agency, but was never identified, was never found, and was never tried for any crimes for lack of knowledge of his existence until after the Soviet Union had already fallen. There also laid the possibility that it could have been multiple spies over generations taking place of one another. There were also ex-officials prior KGB that openly discussed and referenced Perseus knowing of his existence, his mission, and dedication to said mission. One of these officials was Colonel Vladimir Chikov. After the fall of the Soviet Union and losing all faith in the Soviet cause, these ex-KGB were openly discussing this to the United States as a warning, possibly being the reason during the 50s and 60s and so on that money became increasingly more a part of the political process in the United States, or politicians becoming more controlled by their donors than being influenced by the people who voted for them. The creation of a government controlled by corporate bribes, which now has infested every politician in Washington regardless of party affiliation, making empty promises and convincing speeches, persuading faith into the public that they will accomplish these promises in order to get your vote, and keep you distracted when in reality, opposing politicians shake hands behind closed doors and only truly care about being re-elected to remain in a position of power to keep receiving corporate money and bribes because instead of upholding the Constitution, they now only worship the almighty dollar. These Soviet documents mentioning said spy and his mission may conclude that this corruption, among other things, could possibly have been purposefully implemented as a part of Soviet plans to take down or destabilize the United States. Which brings me to the theory that in the campaign, we will get to see Perseus, and one of three things will happen. We will kill him, but in a situation where the world can never know. Or when we see him, we realize we know who it is, it blows our minds, uh, but, you know, somehow we die. Last option being... We do the big mission at the end, and then somebody says something that insinuates and may be a certain character that we've befriended, just as one final plot twist right before the campaign ends, leaving us guessing and leaving it open for a sequel. And if we look at the art released by Treyarch, it shows a man split down the middle, one half Soviet, one half American, insinuating this is Perseus. And this guy looks an awful lot like Hudson, who was our CIA contact and confidant in the original Black Ops 1 campaign. So maybe he's Perseus, or one of the generations of Perseus. Maybe there's multiple spies under the codename Perseus, and he's just involved as part of the twist. But I personally think Hudson is heavily involved, and possibly a red, or maybe a double agent. Maybe they're going to twist it around and make him seem like a good guy or something. I don't know. But anyways, I'm hyped. I hope you're hyped. I'm sure more stuff is probably going to leak out before the 26th. And when it does, I'll do my best to cover it. But anyways, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Comment down below. Keep the conversation going. And I will catch you guys next time.